In the Sweethearts of Rhythm and other all-women bands, talented female musicians found opportunity that was denied them in a patriarchal society. Melba Liston was an exception. She was a female trombone player who worked in male bands where she would have been one of, if not the only, woman in the band. Coming of age as she did in the wake of the swing era, Melba Liston stands out along with Mary Lou Williams as a pioneering woman instrumentalist in jazz who also made her mark as a writer. Liston was born in Kansas City in 1926, so she would have been a newborn at the time that Louis Armstrong was making history in Chicago with his Hot Five. Liston's family was musical, and she received her first trombone at the age of seven. She said, No one told me the trombone was difficult to master. All I knew was that it was pretty, and I wanted one. Liston had a few teachers along the way, but she describes trusting her own instincts more than she listened to her teachers. She spent her teenage years in Los Angeles, where one of her classmates was Dexter Gordon. They later played together in a small band. She joined the Musicians' Union at the age of 16 and got her first gig playing in a local theater, where she also had the opportunity to write music for acts that came in without it. When the International Sweethearts of Rhythm played at the theater, they tried to convince Melba to leave town with them. She didn't feel ready for that, so in her words, I told them I'd be right back, and then I went and hid. From 1944 to 1948, she toured with Gerald Wilson and then joined Dizzy Gillespie's big band. Dizzy's band was a breeding ground for the new music called bebop, and Melba said, The music, the whole attitude and personality of the band was so exciting, I just couldn't believe it. She didn't really think of herself as a soloist in the same way as her colleagues, and she preferred slow blues and ballads. She said, My ear was all right, but I was always arranging and I didn't go jamming and stuff like that. In 1949, she went back out with Gerald Wilson, backing up Billie Holiday. Touring in the South was a bad experience. In addition to the inherent challenges of being a woman on the road in a band of men, they had to deal with racist attitudes and audiences who weren't receptive to the new music. Afterwards, she quit playing music entirely for a few years, teaching and working at a day job. Liston eventually came back to playing in the 1950s, joining up with Dizzy again, and then with Quincy Jones, where she shared the arranging duties. By this point, the writing was on the wall, literally, as she arranged for Duke Ellington and Count Basie and many others over the next couple of decades. She was the house arranger for Riverside Records, and in later years, she was a staff arranger for Motown Records. In the late 1950s, Liston began a long-term collaboration with pianist and composer Randy Weston. They wrote together for decades and produced 10 albums. Here's Weston talking about their relationship. Finally, I met the great Melville Liston. I met her because she played trombone with Dizzy Gillespie's orchestra. And Dizzy came to Birdland one night. And the band was incredible. Lee Morgan, Jerome Richardson, Charlie Fassett, Benny Golson. Dizzy had all these giants. But now everybody's in their 20s now. All these great musicians. Mm -hmm. So he introduced Melba Liston. I never saw a woman play a trombone before, number one. And she did an arrangement of my reverie. And she got up with this big, fat sound on a trombone. You know, and she was not a, a, a large woman.
Here she is in a 1981 clip with Dizzy Gillespie's Dream Band, blowing on Dizzy's tune Manteca. And finally, as legacy goes, to be immortalized in a children's book is right up there in my book. Spread the word, little Melba Doretta Liston was something special. The year she was born was 1926. The place was Kansas City, where you could reach out and feel the music. The avenues were lined with jazz clubs, street bands, and folks harmonizing on every corner. All the hot music markers made sure they had a gig in KC. Melba loved to hum along with the radio. Sometimes the music sounded so good, she cupped her ear to the majestic and closed her eyes. She especially loved Fats Waller with his growly voice and booming piano. The player piano came alive when Melba's kinfolk stopped by. While Melba pedaled, her aunties danced around the room. With all that music flying by, Melba wanted to create her own sound. When she was seven years old, she decided to sign up for music class at school. What instrument could I play? Melba wondered. At the traveling music store, Melba eyed a long, funny-looking horn. That one, she cried. It's beautiful. A trombone? Mama Lucille frowned. It's big. And you're a little girl. Please, Melba begged. <laughs> 